Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. I am Facebook Live right now in a post-Christmas conversation. Hopefully Santa was good to you. And if he isn't, well, maybe try harder next year. I don't know. We always have next year. We can always say we can do this next year. We can we can be better next year. Well, you know what? It's all about this year, and we're certainly going to have the conversation here today. But thank you for joining me. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show on Facebook Live. The podcast will be on therudogshow.com, so make sure you stay tuned for that. It will be loaded as well as the video in association. So thank you for joining me on this post-Christmas conversation all over the globe. We wait for another holiday and perhaps the one we weren't really thinking of. We really wasn't. We weren't looking forward, but we were certainly looking and reflecting on 2017 and think to ourselves, you know what, this has been a great year, but we can always do better. There's always growth. There's always ways to expand who you are to become a better individual, a better person. Of course, welcome to the show, gentlemen that knows a lot about that, and we're going to go into all the nuances. Welcome, Garrick Jones, former NFL, CFL, IFL veteran who's done a variety of things, including the current commissioner of the state's developmental football league the sdfl he joins me this morning garrick welcome to the show thank you for taking your time out in this post christmas uh interview hey it's good to be here man how are you i'm doing fantastic of course uh, as you can see i'm wearing my steelers guard because well the steelers are headed to the playoffs and other teams are not so thank you i appreciate it look everybody welcome Garrick Jones to the show. Is it safe to call you Garrick, or should we call do the whole commissioner thing? Because I can I can go either way. No, nah, man, you can just call me Garrick. <laughs> you never know. We'll you always have to. <laughs> you always have to ask. You know, is, is this is this proper? Is this proper etiquette? Are we doing the right thing here? Are we going about the right way? Anyway, so look, the, the the bottom line is is that in 2017. There were some developmental uh, leagues that were being thrown around. Of course, you're talking about um, – we're talking offline a little bit about character uh, uh, situations, player situations, where they find themselves, the guys I've interviewed, the guys that I will continue interviewing to help give them a podium to get them to leagues just like the SDFL. So the State's yes, Developmental Football League, we're going to go into all the nuances. Not only being a former player, but you have firsthand knowledge of what it was like playing in the league format. And I, I need to ask you, Garrick, when, when, when we look at the state's developmental football league, of course, there, there are a lot of – there are a variety of things going on in the SDFL. But what is – one of the most – from based on your knowledge, based on being the, the commissioner, you clearly know what's going on. But what is your hope right. for the 2018 season uh, moving past the combine? Well, for – our platform, number one, is about education. Um, if I were in a position to have been educated on business while I played, uh, I would have been in a better situation after retirement. Uh, and that's one of the things that I looked at, you know, when I was playing. You know, I looked at what worked and what didn't work, per se. But um, ultimately for us uh, in the SDFL, it's about educating the athletes and educating their families uh, about financial literacy, uh, investments. Uh, and teaching them how to be entrepreneurs and being a brand within a brand. Uh, so that way, if they don't make it to the NFL, uh, they have things that they can fall back on and they can be a productive members of society afterwards. Uh, because, you know, football, and especially professional football, is probably the best temporary job you ever have. It's really quick. On the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, you have to live afterwards. And those are the things that kind of get lost in the shuffle. You know, it's all about the bottom line, uh, gameplay, those types of things each each week. Each weekend, week out, it's all about the game and the team and playing the next team, and you kind of lose uh, the things that are, are really important. Uh, with the SDFL, the actual gameplay is about 30% of this deal. Uh, the rest of it is, is, is on learning and teaching. So for us, that that's our mainstay. It's just free enterprise plus football with the SDFL. So that's what we live by, man. You know, I, I look at other teams. I look at other leagues. and I'll be honest with you, I've had – I've had lots of conversation with with tons of athletes over my years of doing this, but more more importantly, what I'm now hearing is something completely different than what I'm accustomed to listening to. You're actually taking a vested interest in not only educating them, 
on the nuances of football, but outside of football, you're yeah. talking about having having it become the best temporary job you'll ever have. I've never heard that before. Never heard anybody say that, but it, it hits near and dear to my heart because it's true. Right, man. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, from from when we were young, we were we were programmed that the NFL was the end all. You know, and that's that's clearly not the case. Um, because so many guys, you know, end up going and playing, but then after they're done, they end up being being broke or divorced or foreclosed on and all those different things. And, and I myself have been a part of that statistic. Uh, and that's what I looked at. And, and what we do is we teach some testimony. You know, if we, haven't, if we haven't never been there before, it'll be very hard for us to teach you how to get there. So, you know, from a standpoint of the NFL, I mean, it, it's a big, it's a platform, if you will, and that's what we teach these guys. They have to be realistic about the, the reality of it. Uh, less than 1% of all athletes make it to the NFL, you know, and, and that's what we really got to teach these guys. And, and according to Sports Illustrated, <laughs> back in 2016, there are about 16,000 guys each year that are draft eligible. Only 256 of those guys make it, you know, as far as being drafted. And those are being drafted to spots that are already taken. So for me, being on the inside and and what it takes to make it, how to get there, how to stay. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that there's business that you have to learn to be able to leverage what you've got and what you've done. So whether you were a Pee Wee All American or an All Pro in the NFL, um, there are, there's there's ways to leverage what you've done in order to make sure that you're going to be all right after you're done playing. So that's that's what we focus on. That's amazing. You definitely had me at education. <laughs> you had me at education because nine times out of ten, guys who enter the NFL recognize one thing and one thing only. If they go in the first round, they get the most money of any other player. Yeah. If the franchise player, yeah. they're going to sign a multi-year rookie deal, and it's all gravy, right. at least at that point. But what they fail to recognize is that you're always going to retire. It's probably the shortest time in any professional sport you'll ever play in we're not talking golf Absolutely. that's more of a leisure thing you can play in your 40s your 50s even your 60s as guys like uh, uh palmer have played and of course um you know there's so many other players tiger woods is making a comeback so but right. more importantly the nfl is is about now not not forever and based on the educational right. values that these kids will will, will learn Give the listeners somewhat of an example as to what specifically are you showing them? What's what what goes into the training on a regular basis for the athletes that are in the SDFL system? Well, once they uh, make it into the system itself, uh, what we do is we we play bi-weekly. So one week they'll focus on game plan and, and those types of things, and then the next week is a bye week. Um, you know is uh, during that off week, uh, we, we put them in classroom settings and, and uh, those types of things. And then we teach these guys, you know, how to talk. We teach them life skills. We teach them about the businesses that we have them enrolled in uh, in order to really slow that, that down for them. I mean, the game of football is really easy. You know, guys have done it since they were young. So it's like riding a bicycle. Uh, it, it's not hard. It's not hard to teach them how to look the part on the field. That, that's the easy part. The hardest part is being able to get them to understand, you know, how to network, uh, how to leverage what they've done, uh, how, how, to, how to get them to be comfortable uh, in, in, in investment meetings and, and talking to different people and those types of things because that's going to help them sell themselves when they sit down and they talk to scouts. Uh, those are the things that I had to learn on my own. When I was coming into the, uh, to the NFL, you know, from the trunk of my car, I wasn't drafted. I was an undrafted free agent. I didn't have a team even in college. Uh, I had to chase. I had to chase scouts from you know across country in order to get that opportunity. So those are the things that I learned. So we said we wanted to have a platform that didn't really focus on football each and every day, uh, in order to get these guys to really understand it. But football for us is a carrot. Everybody wants to make it to the league, but they need to understand that everybody won't make it. It's not set up for everybody to make it. It's the cream of the crop. Uh, and a lot of times there's a lot of politics that goes into that as well. So they have to understand they, in order to really change the game, they have to play it. And that's what we're about. That's fantastic. You were, you were speaking from my heart because I've interviewed so many players who either made it or didn't make it or are still trying to make it. And whether or not you go from 
uh, Jackson State University, one of the smallest NCAA Division I schools, to someplace, you know, Sequoia Woods University, where Jeff Janis happens to be from, now playing for the Packers. So, Javancy Jones yeah. didn't get in playing from Jackson State, but yes, Jeff Janis from Sequoia Woods University did. So, it, it's really not, yeah. it, it's a very small percentile of guys from a lower college getting into the NFL. But it's more about the impact on these individual players athletes and young men because i i truly believe it's an intricate part of who they are and if they learn from guys such as yourself and all the other uh pieces of the puzzle there at the state's developmental football league can certainly help enrich their lives moving forward in and outside of football a lot can be made with a variety of leagues, we're talking about, you know, obviously the WDFL, of course, the national um, being a part of just a, a set of teams, a variety of, of teams within their respective communities and, and how much of an impact those teams have on their communities. But I'll be honest with you, one is not like the other. And what I mean by that is, 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 is how does one individual athlete and how does he find his way through the variety of leagues and knowing that the SDFL is the league that he can go to because, as you know, there are tons of them out there. Well, I, I, what we do is, is we uh, challenge these athletes to learn. Um, we challenge these athletes to do the research, and it's all about consistency. Uh, a lot of times you have leagues that come and go. You have a lot of leagues that follow the blueprint of the NFL, uh, which relies a lot on fan support as well as TV deals and those types of things in order to be around. Uh, but what they, the athletes themselves need to understand is if that league is going to put you in a good position uh, to be uh, self-sufficient when you're done playing, that's what you really have to look at. Uh, because a lot of times these athletes can go and be with part of a league and, you know, they'll have four or five championship rings and a couple of championship trophies, but at the end of the day, they still have to go to a nine-to-five. And if that's the situation, you know, it's, it, it, it's pretty hard to justify that. My thing is, if I can get you going in six months, we're going to get you to the next level if you're ready. Uh, if we can help you with that, that's, that's the plan. But in the event that you go through the SDFL's process, the end game for us is to eventually have you in the venture capital sector of our league. And now you're making investments, uh, you're buying real estate, and you're acquiring other leads. Uh, so that's the ultimate goal. If, if your league is putting you in a position to be successful off the field, that's what we challenge uh, these athletes to understand, that it's it's bigger than the game of football. they got to understand that, number one. Uh, and number two, everybody isn't uh, equipped for this ride. Everybody doesn't meet the high requirements for what we do um, because of the fact that we push these athletes to be uncomfortable and learn. Uh, they have to They have to actually – understand business and, and be a part of it because a lot of guys just want to show up and put a helmet on and that doesn't work in today's society. They need to understand that this is a level two. Um, so everybody is able to be a part of this deal, but eventually as we grow, you know, when the lifestyle changes happen and a lot of their, their, their teammates and friends and those things, they'll be ready for it. Um, but that's why we're here to teach them and, and we, we challenge these guys to be uncomfortable so they can grow. You know, growth is something that, that happens from the inside out, and we can be handed a silver spoon and not really appreciate the types of things that are given to us. But if we work hard for those things, I think athletes can really adhere to that. A lot of them, and I, I've spoken to former NFLers such as yourself. I, I've spoken to – there's so many other players that recognize how difficult it was to get into the NFL to get to the next level. Is the NFL the end all? Right. No. What you do inside and outside of football – is the end all and who you do it for. And I think some of the, some right. of those keys are certainly missed. I don't know that we can have enough conversations surrounding those players that have make that have made enough of a social impact in their respective communities, regardless of what team. I mean, so, so what if they're born in Atlanta, Georgia, but yet they play for the Eagles? You know, they're, they're, it doesn't right. really matter. You're playing in the area, you're playing for the city, you're playing for the fans. So it's really about right. giving giving back to your respective communities and be able to make a social impact and to be part of something much bigger than themselves. And I think that that's something that can really be adhered to that NFL uh, teams as well as coaches and players could really learn from, listen to and absorb and really apply to their lives. Right. Right. Well, you got to look at it. 
with the NFL, the majority of what goes on is about the bottom line. And a lot of times what happens is players get lost in their shuffle because they become a part of that system. Uh, and, 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 and it's a, it's, it's a good deal for guys to be able to make it there and be able to take care of their families and those types of things. But there has to be something in place for those guys once they get there. Because when I came up, uh, I didn't know anything about investment. When my, when my, when my grandmother and grandfather, when they passed, they didn't leave us anything. All we learned about was working hard and, and, and doing what we had to do to provide for the family. So, uh, we looked at it and said, Hey, look, if we have this many guys each year that are coming out, we have a built in volume system. Uh, and in order to really change the face of this deal, uh, we have to educate. We have to put people in positions to be in business for themselves. Uh, and just utilizing this God given uh, ability. Uh, to play football or whatever the situation may be, but just put them in position to win. Uh, and, and then through that, what happens is the league itself wins. Uh, so we have close to 25 different ways that we're able to generate revenue outside of ticket sales and concessions and merchandising and parking. Uh, like a lot of other leagues, they look at it, they don't really forecast the non-fan support. When it comes down to the fans, you know, they want to see football, but they want to see NFL caliber football. And when you're talking about developmental situations, those guys aren't just there this year. So what we do is we set it up in such a way to where we will be able to operate in the black each and every year. We're not under anybody's time frame, anybody's gun. Uh, we've done this thing since 2012. So we made a test at each sector to make sure that when we came out the gate uh, that we were going to be successful, but not only from a league standpoint, but from, from everybody being a part of the league. And this is from the tip top down to the groundskeeper. Even the fans get the opportunity to be a part of the profit sharing and all those different things. So, uh, and it's all about education. Once we teach people how to how to be successful and, and how to be in business for themselves and how to make money, uh, it, it's just better for everybody. So our deal is we're, we're teaching people from we're teaching people how to how to become check writers instead of check takers, and that's what it's all about. Again, you're speaking right from my heart. Something that I, I, I no, I, I'm serious here. I, I've done this for years already. Right. I've done this for right. years, and and what I'd like to see, all these developmental, whether it's the NFL or anything else, really take a hold onto is to recognize that the investment they can make with the individual player, not only from a physical standpoint, right. from a right. personal standpoint as well. I, I've been an advocate. And for, for, again, years, I hate to repeat myself here, but right. for years to help the NFL mm -hmm. help players. I say help them, I mean help them from a personal standpoint. There's so much attention paid to the head coaches and the coaching staff, and that's great and wonderful. But from a personal standpoint, from a growth standpoint, right. from a conversational team, how to become right. sustainable because the league is not going to keep you forever. You're not going to stay in. Mm -hmm forever there is an end to a beginning right right there is an end game and, and that's the reality of it yeah i have yet to see anybody see the nfl on their own terms no matter how long they stay you know the way it's set up is you, once you get there you won't be out of the door you know case in point with my career each and every week i was fighting for my spot i, I wasn't a marquee player but i was there for a reason so every day they were bringing guys in that i had to send home and that's the mentality that I have to have. And it's the same thing in business. And that's the way we operate the way, the way with the SDFL. We understand that there's other developmental leagues and other leagues out there that have been around for a while. But it's like playing a playing game. You know, if I'm worried about somebody getting our playbook, you know, ultimately uh, they have to stop us. And that's what it is. That's what it's all about, understanding that, you know, we're in this thing and being completely transparent and this thing to help these players get to a point to where not only professionally, but personally, they're in a good spot. I mean, we have programs geared for the family as well as the spouses through the leading ladies of the SDFL that my wife created. So that way, from a holistic standpoint, we're touching everybody. Uh, and, and everybody's able to learn business and learn how to be uh, productive members of society. So like I say, you know, football for us is about 30% of this deal. Now, there's going to be some good games. going to be a lot of guys that are going to be staying. Uh, even with the gameplay that we have now, uh, we have two teams per state, and those teams play each other eight times. Each time they play each other, they're going to play different positions as far as the players themselves because we're going to challenge them to be uncomfortable. We need to be able to expose the strength as well as the weaknesses or the limiters uh, in their game because 
in order to go to the NFL, if you're not drafted at a, a particular position, you had better play every position you can because you want to show your value. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about it if they've never been there before. And that's what we do. So like I'll say, we teach from testimony, and our job is to get these guys and put them in the best best position of doing the right things at the right time and to, to have as much success as possible, and that's on and off the field. So that's what it's all about, man. Man, you're preaching the choir, man. I, like I said, this is, this is something that I really love. I've interviewed so many players, and, and more often than not, I, I, I try to give them some type of conversation before we right. ever record the interview in that, look, this is something that you need to hold on to. Educate yourself in the ways of the NFL. Educate yourself in the ways right. of – what it takes to not only be a good person, good player, good athlete, right. but to, to feel the greatness collectively right. from all of those things, to, to fulfill yourself in such a way that football simply alone just cannot do. It's personalization. Right. It's saying, you know what, I have now been educated in what I need to do and what I have to do. It's just a matter of doing it and executing it. But without the knowledge, without the understanding, how are they going to do it? And that's where – Guys like yourself come in. Ladies and gentlemen, Garrett Jones joins me here right on the Rude Dog Show for about another seven or eight minutes or whenever I feel like it. Uh, and <laughs> show, because this is such a hot topic. The SDFL is doing fantastic things right now. And, and I believe that everybody can get behind it from coast to coast to get behind this methodology. It's music to my ears. It's music to my ears. Of course, I like different types of music. But whenever you hear something that just gets you moving and grooving and, and gives you the energy – and the power, and I'm not just talking about a cup of coffee. I'm talking about the cup of life, the cup of information, which is completely invaluable. And Garrett Jones definitely gives that. He brings that and gives that freely to anybody who's willing to join the ranks to really become a part of something bigger than just themselves. Garrett, let's kind of take a, a, a little step back here because we always have to have fundamental building blocks as a staple of any organized team sport. But at times they become right. very skewed and they can, well, simply be overlooked. Coaches aren't acquired at times because they merely put on a suit for an impending interview. It's more about the wins, the attitude, the personality of a coach, regardless of what position you're interviewing for. But it needs to match right. what the owners are looking for. We're talking about education. We're educating the players, yes. But I think more importantly, the coaches are the ones that also need the education so they can continue growing, so they can also continue not just being overshadowed by the players that are playing for them, but them themselves individually are the ones that really need to be yeah. looked at to help make the impact moving forward, not only for the kids that look to them for the answers, that look to them for – uh, help or guidance or situational conversations or, or what have you, they have to be educated moving forward. When you look at some of the head coaches, and, I, and I, you can use the NFL a, a, as an example. You can talk about Jeff Fisher or, you know, any other, you know, coaches just that, that becomes the coach of an NFL team simply on wins alone. When acquiring right. coaches, ideally from your experience, what do you know as being the right coach and is that right coach going to fit the right system? What steps are being taken to not only ensure these coaches fit what the league is looking for, but the ongoing training that these coaches will need so they can pass their infinitive wisdom onto their players and beyond? Absolutely. That's a great question. And the way we address it at the State Developmental Football League is, is really simple. Uh, we have uh, partnered uh, with a company uh, by the name of Eat Libria, in which um, our coaches, our staff, all of our players will have the opportunity to take a uh, personality diversity indicator test. And what that test does is it, it tells us, you know, their strengths, their weaknesses, or limiters, rather, um, their personality traits, things that they're good at. Would they be a good leader? Would they be more of a follower? Would they be more of a thinker? And it color codes them. And what happens is, um, each one of these people will have that code, and it teaches us how to relate to one another. So that way we're knowing what we need to do when we have a specific color. So it really cuts down a lot of the guesswork, uh, and it streamlines the, the whole dynamic of the coaches dealing with the players and the players dealing with the uh, uh, front office, the players dealing with people in their families. And it just teaches us how to deal with each other in, in, in a more better light. So it just really streamlines everything for us. So. Uh, that's how we do. Uh, everybody associated with us will have that test done. 
so that way I'm able to look at it and say, okay, he's a he's a uh, yellow over red. So I understand what it takes to get to him in such a way to where it gets the best out of him, uh, and, and, and vice versa. So they understand what 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 it is about me uh, that makes me tick. Am I really short with certain things? Or uh, does it take me a minute to, to make a decision? Those types of things. So it's really going to help across the board. Uh, and those are things that we're doing. We think outside the box. You know, I've had the opportunity to deal with countless coaches. Some coaches I, I really could connect with and some coaches I couldn't. Uh, and I feel that, you know, from just drawing upon my experiences as well as the other experiences of guys that have been around, this is really going to help. And these and these types of things help, help organizations really uh, uh, move a lot more efficiently. And that's what we're doing uh, to re- really make sure that we bring in the right people. I mean, the fact that they've done things with other leagues is a, is a really good thing, but they might not fit our criteria. They might not fit the, the mold of what we're doing. So we have to be uh, very selective about who we deal with and how we deal with them and giving everybody the opportunity to go to their next level, whether it be the players, the coaches, the staff, anybody. We want everybody to, to, to go to the next level. That's on and off the field. So that's what we do. This is a win for everyone. It's a win. For the communities is a win for the players, is a win for the coaches, is a win for the for, for the ownership as a part of the SDFL. But more importantly, it's the ability for these young men to not only get the football skills or to enhance their orally, you know, or their their currently enhanced skill set, but it enables them to understand what life is like outside of football. And I, I don't mean that they have no idea, but more importantly, to be yeah. more specific, is is that how to handle all the varieties of things that really carry into their lives moving forward with their own children when they do have them or uh, with the interactions between other people, uh, whether or not they're from their area or not their area or wherever they may come from, to know how to handle the, the types of conflicts and situational things that, that will happen. Because it's not about the situation itself, it's how you handle it. It's what you do with those situations that, that really separates you from somebody else who doesn't know how to handle it appropriately or accordingly. There you go. They, they, they right. want to fly right. from the hip. You know, they want to shoot from the hip and say, you know what, this is how I'm <laughs> going to react. You're just going to have to deal with it. And then you think to yourself, well, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to do that. I would rather do this right. because this is where it's at. Right. You know? uh, right. So with that, with that being said, there was a quite setback last year. You had to forego the 2017 season because you needed to add more teams. And, again, we're talking about coaches. We're talking about players. I'm joined by Garrett Jones of uh, yeah. the SDFL. He is the commissioner of the State's Developmental Football League, joining me here on the Rudog Show. But we talk about the platform and moving forward to, to really put together a very solid, strong, outreaching 2018 campaign. What steps are being taken to help – the 2018 season because you had the combine coming up in January, an opportunity for you to not only evaluate the players and the coaches, but to help make sure that all the building blocks are, are in position to help the campaign become a success in 2018. Well, and the main for there again, the education of our process, um, getting people to understand what we do. Everybody comes with their preconceived notions about to be how it's supposed to be, uh, you know, from from their vantage point, from other leagues that they've dealt with, and that's pretty much all they know. So what we have to do is we have to educate them on what we're doing and how we go about doing it on a daily basis. So it's really the SBFL process. So uh, that's why we've taken our time. Uh, that's why we put together uh, our whole. 